We're back in business, everyone. Look what was waiting for me on the porch. A box. A box, a box, a box. <laughs> So tons of you have been waiting for this moment. You have been waiting for a Figma Dark Magician Girl. Well, we finally have one. So we have something else besides the Yami Yugi one. Though I must say I'm so happy that they made a Yami Yugi Figma. Thank you. And that he came first, not the Dark Magician Girl. It's always the Dark Magician Girl that comes first. Now while I'm opening this, I can only just hope that Figma creates more of the Yu-Gi-Oh! characters from the series, even into GX 5D's Arc V. And by the way, there has been an announcement that there is a sixth season of Yu-Gi-Oh! coming. Yes, I know. We're not even done with Arc V, Arc V, however you want to pronounce it. And yes, we do have confirmation that a sixth season is in the works. I know absolutely nothing about it, only that, of course, the protagonist has insane hair. Because it would not be a Yu-Gi-Oh! series without some insane hair, correct? But seriously, if they could make me a Seto Kaiba Figma, I would be eternally happy and grateful. Hintity, hintity, hint, Max Factory. And here we go, guys. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for her for so many months. My pre-order for her was done like six months ago. And it comes in a pretty Figma box. Oh joy. Yay. So a nice blue box. I was kind of thinking that it would be more on the pink side, but I like the blue that they chose for this particular figure. So 313, this is the Dark Magician Girl, and there you go. So once again, how can you tell that it is authentic? Well, first you have your 20th anniversary Yu-Gi-Oh logo down in the bottom here. We also have, yes, Max Factory up at the top here. And little sticker conveniently located on the box uh, for mine next to the 313. And I got a couple of notes from a couple of you, so thanks for writing, is that it is possible that your sticker might have fallen off of the box and really don't panic yet because it does happen. Sometimes your sticker does fall off. I've even confirmed this with some of my friends that Yes, their stickers have fallen off. As long as you see that there's a Max Factory symbol, 20th anniversary symbol at the bottom, and usually, I've been told this, is that fake figures don't put like these some of these warning signs at the bottom, which is very sad because, well, now your kid's just going to eat something and choke on a fake figure. Ugh. But once more, this will be on a different upload, but I do want to go into the details of how you could tell a real figure from a fake figure. So I do have a fake figure, and it gives every single warning sign about why you should not buy the fake figure. Yeah. So I will get around to that, I promise. I'm just so behind on unboxings. Sorry. So a little bit more on the front of the box. So you see every single little piece that you will get with this figure. So obviously you have the Dark Magician Girl, you have two different faces, her staff located right there, a spell book, which is just awesome. I believe this is, you know what? I do not know what that is. We will soon find out. And then at the bottom here, I was wondering, what is that? I think it's her bendable legs that you can kind of pose her in a more bendable form in the leg part. Yeah, we'll get to this when I start styling her for you. Side view, you have a suggested pose for her, so very cute little Dark Magician girl. And the other side, a different pose with a different face, a so more serious look. Where's this one? More happy-go-lucky, typical Dark Magician girl. Also on the top part is another posable way that you can form her, and this is with her spell book. This is also the same for the bottom part. And then the back part, so all the different types of poses, etc., that you can put her into, as well as there's Yami Yugi right there, so you can get him if you want. My Yami Yugi is quite excited to have a friend. 
Yay for him. Once more, don't let your children eat this because it's just bad. We don't want that. We don't want our children to be eating plastic. And then on the front, it says sculpted by Max Factory, so the actual creators of the Figma series. And the sculpture is Seiki and Taizo. Thank you, Seiki and Taizo. Okay, so now we get to actually opening the box and seeing the figure and posing her a bit. And like always, it's just a matter of me and my figmas. I expect that it's going to be impossible for the stand to go right into the Dark Magician Girl's back because let's face it, here's Yami and, oh wait, you're, you're being good. There, there you go, Th that was cheating, but yeah, his stand, terrible. I still can't get it into his back. So a little extra note is that I've been told with fake figmas is that the real ones, in the bottom, if you look inside the box there, you see the Figma logo way at the bottom. Fake ones usually do not have that logo at the bottom. It's just solid blue. It may not even be blue, it may just be white cardboard, whatever it is. And wrapped in plastic, here she is. She looks so cute. I mean, if, if I could get the plastic off to show you guys, already I can say she might be my favorite Dark Magician Girl figure, and I have tons of them. But she's just so cute. Come on, plastic. I want to see this. Oh, there we go. Okay. There she is. You gotta admit, she's adorable, right? I love just everything about her, just off the bat. We don't even have to go further with this review. It's absolutely amazing. So what I first find immediately is that she's way detailed compared to most of the other Figmas that I own. And this is just because of her outfit. I do like how the cape is already going outward, away from the body. And this, yeah, it cannot be changed. It can't move closer, but that's totally fine. It is connected to her chest part. Her chest can extend upward and downward and even a little bit side to side. But first off, what I like to do with these Figmas is check the joints, if they're squeaky, if they move well. And no squeaky so far. They do move well. They're a little bit stiff just because it's new, new packaging, just out fresh. Just a couple more little tweaks and playing around and they will move very easily but so far i really like the joints how about the head does the head move yeah the head moves side to side yeah we're saying no here so what i'm noticing right now is that with these little flaps here and like the skirt belt thing whatever it's called is that it's not breakable you don't have to worry about it it's a bendable plastic so you don't have to worry about dropping this particular figure it's not going to break in any way and this is mostly because it's plastic. There's nothing breakable about it. So I figured out is that there's the there's a little bit of a difference between the movie Dark Magician Girl and the regular Dark Magician Girl from the series, and it all has to do with the belt right here. So this is the Dark Magician Girl from the actual Yu-Gi-Oh! series. This is because she's portrayed with a golden belt. Whereas in the movie, for some reason, they changed it to a purple belt. And... I don't like it as much. I mean, really, it doesn't bother me at all. I, do, I just notice these things, but I would prefer the gold over the purple any day. But just to let you guys know, you are getting the series Dark Magician Girl, not the movie Dark Magician Girl, if you order this Figma. So a little bit on the detailing. So you see the little star right there on her chest. It's very well done. And once more, the paint job on this is exquisite. For these, and with any sort of real figure, you should see very, very minimal painting mistakes. It's not uncommon to see some paint move off, like this pink area into the boot here, but it should not be more than like a couple little areas. You could really tell. If it's smeary looking, you pretty much have a boot leg. But for this, absolutely real and absolutely gorgeous. So these little resin balls, as I like to call them on the side. Very nice, so top one is a gold, the bottom one is a pinkish. I would have preferred if it was a little bit more red to contrast against this pink little spike right up here, but really, it, it really doesn't bother me. I'm just being picky right now. And same with the boots down here. So we have a golden color for both the 
outside and the inside of the boot. Now what I'm finding is that with the boot, this top part right here, the top detailing part, it does move and wiggle a lot. And I suspect it has to do with certain ways that you pose the figure that this has to move. I thought it would have been stuck and the whole boot would just be completely formed together. But maybe there's just a way that you pose it that these things have to be moving a little bit. But we'll go into that more. And now we're going into the undergarments because, yes, a lot of people are interested in what color the undergarments are for their anime figures. So little kids out there who are afraid of underwear for reasons unknown, parents who are afraid of letting their kids know what underwear is, beware, look away, whatever the description is, blah, blah, blah. So her lingerie is blue. And I may just be weird, but this is the best news in the world because a lot of other Dark Magician Girl figures that I have received is that their underwear is white. And I never understood that, is that it's, it obviously, this blue part right here, it's a leotard. Come on. Obviously, it should match. You don't just sew it all the way to your hips and then you make white underwear and stick it onto it. That is not how this works. It's blue. Thank you, Max Factory. You are smart and brilliant because the Dark Magician Girl wears blue. Thank you. So weird, I know, but anyway, let's move on. I'm just so happy that someone finally made her with blue underwear. So sorry, I'll let that go now. So the back of the figure, very nicely done. Still love how the cape flows outward, as well as her hair. Her hair spikes to the outward. Some figures, they usually don't portray her hair going outward. Sometimes it goes down. Probably makes it a little bit easier for the sculpture. But yes, her hair does go spiky outward. Very hard to work with with a wig, but heck, that is her actual hairstyle. So the only weird thing about this figure has to do with the underside of her cape up here. There's a little bit of a blue that kind of comes up and attaches to the pink side of the cape. So I think this is for stability that the sculpture was doing in order to keep the cape upward and flowing out, though probably should have been a pink color. Not a big deal. No one's going to see it. I am just pointing this out. And in addition, is that I would have thought this would be one solid piece here. There is a seam, as we're going to call it. So the cape is two separate pieces. Once again, this probably has to do with posing that they had to make it into two separate pieces. But in reality, it's one piece, guys. And you guys might be wondering the same. What is that hole in the back of her head? I don't know yet. Oh, wait, 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 doy, doy, everyone doy with me, is that it's for the hat. And finally, one little thing that they missed, that or I have to go back and look at references, but underneath, so underneath the arrow, there we go, a little bit there, is that where the gold kind of meets on the belt, is that usually there's a red resin gem right there that kind of holds, that in my opinion, kind of holds the belt together. They did not include the resin gem. It's not a big deal. Probably would have been too bulky to put it on a small figure like this. But just pointing it out. And once more, let's take a look at her face. So very happy, cheerful face. Love the choker there. Green eyes. Little bit. Yes, she does have her little bit of a rose blush right in there. But she's absolutely adorable, right? Right. So I kind of wanted her to sit in a casual way while I unbox the rest, but she doesn't really bend completely well into a sitting position. Okay, that's as good as we're going to get. What else do we have? Well, first off, we should probably start with the hat, because I really want to know. Okay, yes, it, it does have to do with that little hole in the back of her head. So on the hat, you do have a notch right there, and I assume you just ram it on in there. Okay, it, it, fits, it fits fairly well. Yes, it does fit very well. I'm very happy, and it does pose it very nicely so that her hat does go off at an angle. Usually with the other figures that I have of her, you have to kind of fiddle with the hat, turn it around and until it gets to this position, but it's perfectly in there. And it's a very nice hat. I really love this hat. 
And on the back, nice detailing on the pink. It does slope upward. It is not straight out like a witch's hat. They did do this very nice. Here's your swirl. And, well, now it, now it just brings it all together. Now she is the Dark Magician Girl. So the hat just makes it. So it's very nice that you can pose her with and without the hat. Though I will most likely just keep her hat on because it just completes her. And we have her little wand. And very happy that they chose gold. Sometimes they choose yellow for this, and it's not my choice. But nice looking wand. Pretty delicate, but it can definitely survive a fall. So I can't stick this into her hand at the moment. She has closed fists on right now. I assume that they gave me hands in order for her to hold this because what a waste. So with this particular figure is that there's so many pieces that they kind of jammed the stand and the hands into the bottom part here. And what I've noticed is that usually we get an even number of hands, whereas we are getting seven hands. What happened to the eighth? I like even numbers. And also we have in the top part here, we have that little joint thing that I'm loving right now from Figma. And it goes to the base stand right here. And it supposedly makes it easier for your figure to go in and pose more accurately. Thank you. So maybe this one will be able to go into the stand very well. Sort of like the archetypes. I loved that little joint. And once again, another little piece. I'm assuming it's for a hand joint. I haven't really fiddled with it, but maybe I will later on. And what comes with it all, so you have your hands, your stand, your extra pieces, and your little stand base thing. And let's take a look at the hands in detail and what you get. Let's put the scepter sword. It's not a sword, come on, man. It th staff, staff, there we go. Put the staff into her hand. Kinky. So it's hard for the camera to pick up the detailing of these hands, so I will use my own hand in order to tell you what the hand positions look like. This one at the top, kind of like this. So this is pretty much the one that, can you put the staff in? Nah, eh, not really, no you can't. This is just relaxing down at your side. Next one, your typical peace sign, and followed by your other sign of the peace sign, so you could kind of have her do this if you so choose. Other side, okay, this is where you put the staff. So you have kind of your holding hands with your pinky extended, because we're doing it the British way. And finally, we have kind of the hands outward, so if she's like unleashing an attack from her spell book. So right now, I am going to take out one of her hands to kind of put in a holding one to put the staff into. And it does take a bit of fiddling to get her hands off. And what makes it a little bit difficult is that her glove does have an extra blue piece down here that extends outward. So you kind of have to work a little bit away from that in order to get the hands off. It is possible, just takes a little bit of fiddling. Oh, now which one is the right hand? Thumbs go in between. Yes, your thumbs are pointed to your body. Go and find the thumb to your body. So I'm just putting in her new hand and it goes in easily and it looks good. So not much of a difference, but this is the one to hold your little staff. And now comes the hard part getting the staff in. Okay, no, no, come on, yes. So I can say this right now, is that start at the top, closest to her thumb, and then kind of push it in towards the bottom. It will go, it just takes a little bit of elbow grease, top of the finger grease, whatever you want to call it. But there she is, she can hold her staff now. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so now comes the part that I am just absolutely dreading is this Figma stand. The nice thing is that so far the stand sets up and it's really tight in there. It's, that's a nice thing. So it will stick very well. And now it comes to this. Her hole is in the lower back there. 
kind of you can see it. Please go in well. I dread this part. <laughs> I expected it, but why? I expected it. I knew it. I prepared myself for it. I hate Figma stands. So to be fair, the nice thing is that it did go in. She is, yeah, she's fairly stable, but it does take a lot of twisting and turning and you're kind of working against her cape that's coming out in the back. Similar to Yami Yugi, if you put his cape on, is that it's really hard then to get that little notch into his back. Very same, similar to the Dark Magician Girl. So in the box, when I was looking through it, I did not really realize up until this exact moment what these were used for. It's for her spell book, because there's no other way for her to hold it. So it's a little bit of a extra piece for this particular figure. So what you're gonna do is you have a ball on the top of one of these stands here. You're gonna place it into the base. If it goes, and if I don't break it, Please do not break this. Oh my gosh, Yami, do not break this. So a little bit on her spell book. It's very detailed. I do like what they did to it. So shiny silver painting at the bottom here, a little lock, and even a little bit more detail up at the top. You have a green gem, even some gold detailing around there, and kind of looks like a, oh, feathers. So two feathers crossing, both on the back cover and on the front cover. Now the inside, no, there's no magician symbols or anything, it's just blank. I mean, if you really wanted to and kind of ruin the quality, you can go and draw some symbols in there. Your choice, and a little luck on the side. So it's a very detailed book, I do like this, and it slips fairly easily onto the stand, but come here. I think I installed that backwards. Yeah, of course I installed it backwards. She can't exactly read it like that. Okay, take two, turn it around. There we go, she can read it much better. So, you can have the spell book, if you so choose, next to her, so that's kind of cute. And we're down to the last few pieces of what comes with this particular figure, is that usually with Figma you have different faces. So on this one, you kind of have her looking off to the other side. And then on this one, it's her happy, yay, face. So I will probably use this one more just because she's such a happy-go-lucky magician girl. On her at the moment, it's her casual normal face. So simple little smile. Whereas this particular one where she's kind of looking off to the side there still has that smiley face. There's not really a serious one that comes with this particular kit, which is good because have you ever really seen the Dark Magician Girl very serious? Very rarely. And finally, the last thing with these kits are these very strange appendages. These are her legs. It's just in an extreme bendable version. So points here are the knees. And let's see how it is to take off one of the joints to these legs. I assume the, yes. So the boot comes off, huh, nice boot. And if I do this correctly, I can get her leg off. Yeah, it has to be her whole leg. Come on. So just use a simple back and forth motion. It will come off. Okay, it does come off. And now she just looks very strange. So now I have to figure out is this your right knee? I think this is the right knee. So let's see. Oh boy, this is so ridiculous. Please let this work. I don't know how this works. Okay, so from the directions, it says you start with the boot and you place the leg into the boot, come on. There we go. So, one, and now we have to somehow put this in here, and God, these directions are stupid. Okay, who the hell thought this was a good idea? This, no. Okay, I figured out the trick. 
and it's so stupid. So be warned, guys. On her leg, so this is the actual skeleton of the system, is that there is another joint, kind of this. So this little indented groove area wraps around this ball right in the end here. You have to take this piece out when you're changing the legs as well and just attach it to her regular leg. Whereas when I pulled it out the first time, this little joint piece was still stuck in there. So it's not going to work that way. But oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what a stupid thing. So when you have the messed up knee version now, is that you have that little tiny indented groove. It's only going to wrap around that ball, so the smaller ball, not any of this. So make sure that you get down to the actual skeletal system of the figure. And now hopefully, I say, this will go in much easier. <laughs> Why? Okay, it does go in much easier. Oh my gosh, that was an ordeal. Okay, yeah, I admit that the leg looks nice to damn it to hell. Okay, try, 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 trial two, trial one million. The leg does look better, but who cares? I hate this leg so much. I'm not doing the other one for you guys. You, you guys get it. Just go in, get to the whole skeletal system with the other leg, pop it in with this other knee if you so choose, but I am done. I am not going to try that again. That was such an annoyance. Okay, now that that is in, I am going to now post a couple of ideas, pictures that you can pose her into. So go ahead and enjoy those, and then we will be back and discuss a few little prices and where you can find this very annoying to put together figure. So stay tuned. See you in like five, 10 seconds. Okay, so let's go into where you could find her, even where you could find Yami Yugi, how much they cost, and, well, to start with, I reserved the Dark Magician Girl about six months ago, so a long, long time ago, been waiting for this, and she started at about, do not quote me on this, well, maybe quote me on this, the pre-order price was set around $50, whereas now you can get her for a little bit cheaper of $48.71 US dollars. Uh, the problem, I hate to say this, I knew this was going to happen, which is why I pre-ordered her. So, got her from Hobby Search, she is sold out. And the same with Yami Yugi. In fact, let me go see Yami Yugi. You are 5,700 yen, so exactly the same price for both. Now, I can't promise anything with Yami Yugi. He might have a couple more remakes, but he's getting very hard to find. The Dark Magician Girl is that it's her first release. Usually they make one or two more copies of her, so do not fret. I will put Hobby Search and Amiyami in the description below and just keep checking back because Amiyami... Yes, Hobby Search, she's gone for the moment. Ami Ami, she's on back order. And you can get her for a couple cents cheaper. It's 5,600 yen, so like a dollar cheaper from the other one. Not a big deal, but if it's on back order, that means that it is a much better chance to get your hands on her. Whereas, let's see, Yami Yugi, what are you on Ami Ami? And good news is that for Amiyami, Yami Yugi is up. You can get him immediately. He's a bit, little bit on the expensive side, uh, not too much. 6,480 yen, whatever that is, put it there. And he is available. Now, just for grins, I never recommend doing this, especially for Figmas that are just hot off the press. Let's go check what Amazon has it for. All right, so Dark Magician... <laughs> yeah, who wants to take a guess right now as to how much the Dark Magician girl is going on Amazon? I'll give you a hint. 
Think upwards. So $171 for this on Amazon. Nuh-uh. No. No, don't you dare go to Amazon. Don't you dare hit the submit button. Just wait. That is not $170. It will never be worth that much. Maybe in 30 years, but it is not worth that much right now. All right, guys, so the best that I can say for right now is you can get Yami Yugit off of AmiAmi. If you're going through hobby search like usually I go through, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Don't worry, usually they will have more. You just have to keep checking back every day because it will happen. But that's the best that I can do for you. Links are in the description, as well as the link to the unboxing that I did of Yami Yugi a few months ago. But for the time, I am done. And I wish you all a happy new year. I will see you all in 2017 with even more unboxings, more speed drawings, even hopefully some gameplay footage, because I really do want to play some games for you guys so you can laugh at how pathetic I am when I play games. But for the moment, it is done for this unboxing. Once more, Happy New Year. Yay, 2017. I will see you all in the next video. If you liked this video, please smash the like button down there. Even better, subscribe to me. I have tons more unboxings on the way, tons more things to entertain you with. I will love you guys forever. Thank you so much for all my subscribers right now. I adore each and every one of you. In the meantime, Yummy Sorceress is out.